All right, back to it here as we uh, head towards the checkered flag here on a Monday. Dr. Sherry O'Donnell joining me. She um, was a Senate candidate, came up a little bit behind in the primary, no big deal. She's still active politically in this state, and her voice, an important one out there. And uh, she's joining me now to discuss uh, a big announcement from Friday. Doc Sherry, good to have you back on the program. I appear to have lost her. Well, she appears to have gone into the abyss of the electronics. It happens. It's Monday. We're going to get through this, you and I. We'll be in electronic high-tech counseling. Uh, Anthony's going to go ahead and see if he can find her again. Thank you, Anthony. Um, she's somewhere in the Ghosts in the Machine. Wasn't that a police album? Yeah, Ghosts in the Machine from, from whenever. I, I'm, I'm watching this. So while well, this is going on, I'm watching, speaking of technology, I'm, I'm watching this crazy video from Normal, Illinois. I have Sherry. Oh, I just have uh, Sherry. A Rivian. Uh, factory there, Rivian, being the EV company, right? Rivian. Well, a bunch of the cars caught fire, 57 of them, I think. All went up in flames, these electric cars. Here's your Green New Deal update. Hey, guess what? Guess what? It's a disaster, the Green New Deal. EVs are a disaster. Yeah. Nobody wants them. And if you do want them, you might have to wait in line after yours burned up and Normal Illinois, Rivian. It, it, it happened, um, gosh, what day did this happen? Yesterday? Might have been Saturday night into Sunday. That's why it was Saturday night into Sunday. Crazy. Crazy. All right, so. Uh, no sherry, I take it? Not yet. All right, so we're just going to, probably going to just go ahead and deep six that because we're just having too much trouble with it, so. We'll move along. We'll have her back another time. It's no big deal. She's here now. Oh, and she's here. There she is. Doc good Sherry. morning. How are you? I'm good, Steve. Thanks. Good. So here's uh, one of the most remarkable speeches I've seen in a long time. It really was. As Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the, the, the best known uh, of the Kennedy clan that's left, I think, he's by far the best known, uh, says his party that he's been a part of since he was six went to his first convention. Once the party of no war, of working people, of free speech has now become the party of war, big pharma, big tech, big government, big donors, corruption and censorship. That's in part what he said. And he said, because of this, I've spoken to Donald Trump, we want to work together in a unity party. He said, that doesn't mean we're going to agree on everything. We don't. And I look, I don't agree with RFK Jr. on a bunch of things, but on some things I do. And on these things I do, free speech, looking at big pharma, I mean, how important do you think this announcement is? Oh, that's going to be huge, Steve. And I think it's going to benefit Trump a lot. For those people that weren't so much for Trump, I think they absolutely will navigate towards Trump. I think one of the things that that did was also show how left the Democrat Party has gone and that they can't be the party to allow to rule our country. So that announcement is going to be huge. Yeah, so you look at in Michigan, for it's kind of odd. Michigan is an outlier right now in the uh, in the polls. Insofar as Michigan, it shows Kamala Harris with a two-point lead, according to the Real Clear Politics Average, by far the biggest uh, lead for Kamala Harris of all the swing states, right? Uh, and it also shows the lowest amount of a crossover from RFK to Trump at, you know, just a couple of point advantage for Donald Trump. In some states, it's 50% advantage. And I think that's probably true here. Don't know what's going on, but I think that Donald Trump picks up a point, point and a half by RFK joining him. It, it shows true unity for the first time in a long time, doesn't it? It shows true unity. It shows the willingness that Trump has to work together. I think uh, the disadvantages that the Democrat Party had done to RFK, as well as the media, he didn't give the, they didn't give him a fighting chance. And the very platform that he stood on, the medical freedom, the stopping the mandates, the smaller government, not larger, stopping the taxation, he realized that much more aligned with the Republican Party rather than the current Democrat Party. And I think we're going to see, continue to see voters poll towards Trump as opposed to Kamala Harris. She's not bothered to even be interviewed with the media, and yet the media says that they have her polling higher. How could somebody that was behind Trump dismal numbers suddenly overnight without interviewing with anybody rise to the levels that she has. I don't agree with it, and I think it's going to do Michigan well, and I think it's going to do Donald Trump well. 
Uh, I think that's exactly right. And look, you were out there on the campaign trail. You talked to thousands of people here in the state. Number one issue still is the economy. The number two issue is still the border. And, and let's not forget, three years ago today, three years ago today, 13 Americans were killed in Afghanistan by that reckless performance by the president and Vice President Harris, right? Absolutely. And, you know, she's, I've been down to the border more often than what Kamala Harris has been. And she wants to say that she was the czar of the border and that everything with the border is Donald Trump's fault. Once again, she is mirroring how Biden campaigned, and that's truly from the basement. And yeah, there were so many debacles that she's done. The very things that are most important to Americans, as you listed, is the inflation, is the border. And then, yes, all we have to do is look at the failed policies, the failed records that Kamala and Biden have done. We'll know that she is not the choice. But the fact that you know she, she wants to give more money away than what we have, she's going to continue to give money, and she has not been down the border. If she has, it certainly hasn't been much of an effort at all. And she was the border czar, and she wants to blame Trump for what's going on at the border. This is a Biden-Harris crisis as much as it is a border crisis. Absolutely true. Uh, Doc Shea, we'll have you back again when uh, hook up a little longer, talk a little longer. But thank you for being here as always. I appreciate you. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, we'll you. see how that plays out in November. Good talking to Doc Sherry, as always. Um, look, we're going to find out how it plays out. We'll see if, I'm going to guess Donald Trump mentions it again today in Detroit. He's in Potterville, Michigan, Thursday. J.D. Vance in Big Rapids, Michigan, tomorrow. It, it's the Trump it's the Trump tour in Michigan this week. Trump tour Michigan, all right? And it's because they think they can win here, which they can. Which they can. I'll be right back with some final thoughts for this Monday after this.